Hello and welcome to this Silver Stripe screencast. This is Aaron Carlino, also known in the community as Uncle Cheese, here to talk to you about how to get up and running with a local development environment in Silver Stripe. Silver Stripe is a PHP based application that connects to a database, so having a finely tuned local environment for your projects will help you work faster and with less redundancy. Before we dive in, let's just quickly go over what we'll be covering in this tutorial. First, we'll be talking about how to install a local web server. If you're running Mac or Linux, you probably have all the necessary tools installed on your system by default. But if you're just starting out, you might find it easier to get a pre-configured package that just gets everything going in a single click. So that's what we'll be covering first. Next, we'll talk about Composer, which is a piece of software that's recommended for installing Silverstripe. And after that, we'll create our first Silverstripe project. And lastly, we'll go through how to refine our environment configuration so we can create projects quickly exactly the way we want them set up every single time. So let's talk about installing a local web server. There are a few of them out there to choose from. If you're using a Mac like me, you probably want MAMP or MAMP. Windows users may prefer WAMP. Both of these tools are free. And just for clarity, the AMP in both of these acronyms stands for Apache MySQL PHP, in case you didn't know what you were getting into. Since I'm using a Mac, this tutorial will focus on using MAMP, but be aware that all of these bundled web servers operate and install very similarly. So here I am on the MAMP webpage. I'll just click the download link and install it. They'll try to talk you into the pro version, which comes at a cost. I can't speak to the value of that product, but I can assure you that if you're just starting out, the free version will serve you just fine. MAMP installs to our Applications folder, not as an application, but rather as another folder. If we take a peek inside, we'll find all the modules, libraries, and configuration files that create the server we'll be running. We just click on the MAMP package, and it pulls up a panel. Notice in the upper right corner that the Apache server and MySQL server are off. We can turn these on simply by clicking Start Servers. When the servers turn on, MAMP lets us know that it was successful by rendering a web page in the browser. Take a close note of the host name for this web page, localhost colon 8888. This is where all of your projects will run when using MAMP. MAMP is fairly configurable, although the pro version is probably much more so. You can see that we can tweak things like the port that runs our sites and the version of PHP. Most importantly, take note of the document root that MAMP is using. By default, it runs in the application's MAMP htdocs folder. This is where all the sites are going to run. So let's just jump into that folder in the terminal and see if we can create a working PHP file. I'll make a script that renders some text to the browser. So if we go to localhost 8888 slash test.php, you'll see that it is executing the script properly and we now have a working local web server. So next we'll install Composer, but before we get into that, let's go over what exactly Composer is and how it works. Composer is a package manager for PHP. Package managers are increasingly popular these days, especially for front-end libraries. You may have heard of NPM or Bower. At their most fundamental level, package managers are simply abstractions of a source code repository. They obscure all the minute details about where the projects live and what branches are available, and they allow you to simply refer to packages semantically by name and by version number. A key feature of Composer is that it resolves dependencies, so when one module requires one or more other modules in order to work properly, Composer will sort all that out and pull down everything you need. Further, Composer applies version constraints, so if a package requires a module that doesn't work with something you already have installed, it will apprise you of that conflict and halt the installation so that your project doesn't break. So you might be wondering, why can't I just go and download the modules and install them manually? Well, let's use an example Silverstripe project without Composer to illustrate why that isn't always a good choice. So here we have your website, and you want to go out and get the gallery module. So you go out to some web page, download it, and drop it into your project. When you try to run the application, the module complains that it's missing the slideshow module, which is integral to the gallery module. Now your project is hosed, so you go and find the slideshow module. After some digging, you're able to track it down, and you drop it in, hoping this will make your gallery module happy. But we have a new problem. The slideshow module isn't compatible with the version of Silverstripe that we're running. 
So you can see where this is going. All the players in your project don't get along and your website blows up. Installing packages with Composer solves all these issues because you simply execute a nice declarative command and asking to install a package at a specific version and it handles all the orchestration for you. It is by no means a magic bullet. You will still have to resolve conflicts, but it will tell you what those conflicts are and it won't let your project exist in a state with incompatibilities. Installing Composer is just a matter of running two commands. These commands might look a little foreign to you if you're new to the terminal, so the easiest thing to do is visit the Silverstripe documentation and search for Composer. If we just click on the first result, it gives us these two commands to copy and paste under the heading Installing Composer. Let's copy the first command, which installs Composer. It doesn't matter where in the file system we run this command. The second command will move the Composer executable to a place where it's globally accessible so we can just run Composer anywhere. Now let's create a Silverstripe project using Composer. Because this is a new project, we'll use the create project command and point Composer at the Silverstripe slash installer package. We'll specify a project name of example. So Composer is now going out and reading the Silverstripe installer package. It's finding the version 3.1.6 to be the latest stable version. And it's going to pull down all the dependencies, including Silverstripe framework. And then it's going to get the CMS on top of that. And lastly, it's going to install the default theme that comes with the Silverstripe installer. So now if we go to the localhost 8888 URL example, you'll see that we get this install page and it's full of red errors that are telling us that the install isn't going to work. So let's go through this and see if we can sort it out. One thing that it's complaining about is that there isn't enough information to connect to the database. So let's fill out the database username and password. Now if you're using MAMP, the default user for MySQL is username root with password root. And let's just change this database name to something a little bit more meaningful. We'll call it ss underscore example because this is the project example. And lastly, there's this admin account we can create. So let's specify a password. That will be the account we use to connect to the CMS. We'll recheck the requirements and install Silverstripe. So the installation was successful. It's going to prompt you to delete the install files as they are a security risk. So we'll click on that and it will authenticate us before moving forward with that. So we'll provide that admin password we used. So now that we've installed Silverstripe, let's finally tune our development environment so we can get things working a little bit faster. The main ingredient in environment management in Silverstripe is the underscore ss underscore environment.php file, also known as SS environment. Let's talk a bit about what this is. It's a shared configuration across all your projects. So it should probably contain things like database credentials as those are most likely to be shared across all your projects. It can also include other application settings. You might have things in there like API keys or email addresses that you want to specify as globally accessible by all projects. And because it's a PHP file, it can follow logic. So you can actually create a dynamic configuration by looking at something like maybe the HTTP host that's coming in or the remote IP. Uh, you can make decisions in real time about how you want to configure the project. Most importantly, the SS environment file does not have to ship with the project. It can live outside the web root, outside of source control. And when you deploy this project from your local environment to somewhere else, that remote environment might have its own configuration and you don't have to worry about overriding settings. So how does SS environment work? Well, here's our structure that we're dealing with. We have the htdocs folder uh, and then everything underneath there is a project. So you've got project A, B, and C. We put the SS environment file in htdocs and it cascades down to project A, B, and C and they all inherit those settings. I can place an SS environment file in project B here and it will override the parent SS environment. 
There is a way to merge the settings so that you get some from the project level and others are inherited, but that requires some custom coding and it's probably something for another tutorial. So in a typical SS environment file, you definitely want to define the database username and database password, and everything is defined in constants, as you can see. Lastly, you'll probably want to define the SS environment type as dev, so you can take advantage of all the debugging tools and get some verbose errors, and you don't want to have to authenticate every single time you do something destructive, so that's a good idea to have that enabled. Let's create our first SS environment file and provide the database username and database password. And we'll specify that environment type as dev. And now I'll create my second Silverstripe project. We'll call it example two. And just as a refresher, this is the htdocs folder. You can see I have the ssenvironment.php file just sitting there next to all the projects. So let's go to that example2 URL now, and you can see the install page comes up again. But it looks slightly different. Some of the fields have been populated for me, like the database username and password. I still have to provide a database name. Let's use example2. And I'll provide that admin password again. And the installation was successful once again, and just clear out those install files and we're good to go. So let's take this a step further with SS Environment. There are some more things we might want to throw in there. One of my favorites is SS Database Choose Name. By turning this on, it will tell Silverstripe to intelligently determine a database name so that you don't have to. It will look at the file system and see where the project is installed and choose a database name based on that. So that's really useful. Also, you can specify the default admin username and password. For local development, you're probably not too concerned about security, so having something easy to remember like root root is just fine. Another setting you might want to turn on is SS send all emails to. If you provide your email address here, it will force all emails to go to you instead of to the places that your application might be sending them, which could include a client or anyone else, and they don't want to be getting your tests. So by applying this setting, it will force email to go to you no matter what to address you've specified. So that's very useful in development mode. And for a full list of settings, you can go to the docs and just look up environment management. There's probably about a dozen or so other settings you can throw in here. Some are more useful than others. But uh, have a quick look through there because you might find something that's really useful to you. Let's apply those new settings. We'll use the database choose name and the default admin username. And we'll create a new project called example3. And when we go to the example3 URL, you'll notice that we bypassed the install page. And that's because Silverstripe learned everything it needed to know about this project from SS Environment. So this is a really quick way to, to light up a project and do some testing. You can just throw this project away when you're done and do it again. And you don't have to go through that install process every single time. So SS Environment comes in really useful here as it applies all the settings you want for every single project and we're off and running with a local development environment in Silverstripe. That's it for this tutorial. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions or feedback, please post it below. Thank you.